Hey guys, Michael Corsentino with my October 2017 lighting tutorial for BehindTheShutter.com. If you guys are loving these tutorials, do yourself a favor and head over to BehindTheShutter.com and get yourself set up with a subscription to the magazine. There are print and digital versions, so you can get all sorts of awesome content every month, guaranteed to take your photography to the next level delivered right to your door. This month is all about creating dramatic one light looks. So we're gonna look at two different lighting techniques with two different light sources. One we're gonna use with strobe, which you'll see on the left, and one we're gonna use constant light, uh, which you'll see on the right. Okay, so let's dig right in, and we'll talk about the different reasons why I would choose one tool over another because they do have di different properties and they create a different result. All right, so let's take a look at our first thing. First off, I just want to talk a little bit about collaboration. Any good photo shoot, in my humble opinion, is the result of a good collaboration. It's a real collaborative process overall, whether you're just dealing with a model, as we were in this case, or you're dealing with a model and a whole creative team, uh, like a stylist and hair and makeup, etc. So you always, I find that it, it, it helps to go the extra mile and have a plan and figure out what you want to do, uh, because it ends up with a much more um, you know solid and compelling result than if you just kind of you know wing it. Um, so here you see a shot of Kino, uh, the male model, um, showing me the wardrobe that he sourced uh, um, as per my instruction. I had told him what I had in mind. We kind of brainstormed, came up with a concept that worked together, and we wanted to do kind of a retro 1970s styling. Um, so he hit up his local uh, vintage clothing store and sourced this awesome jacket, which was right exactly what I had in my mind's eye. Um, so he's sending me a picture here. Uh, so that we, so I can see it and make sure that it's the right thing. All right. So communication with your team is is crucial. Um, and whether, like I say, whether that's an entire team or just the model, you can really goes a long way towards uh, you know creating a much better result. All right. So I just wanted to throw that in. It's not really lighting, but it's important. Okay. So here is the setup for our first look, and you can see the image on the left, um, and you can see the setup here on the. Uh, let me just get my brush. You can see the setup here on the right. Okay, so this is a sort of a um uh, I call this kind of the lonely stepchild of lighting patterns because you don't really hear a lot about it when people are teaching lighting and, and that's a shame because it's really fantastic as you can see I mean I love these results I think that it's really cool and this is not your typical light at 45 degrees from the side and 45 degree angle down uh, this is top light this is light from above as you can see here my light is here and it's this is pitched back a little bit toward the background you can't really make it out here and I do that because you want to be able to get the catch lights in the model's eye so you'll see that I have him looking kind of up a little bit toward the toward the key light uh, and that's crucial and again this is just a one light um, setup so you, you have to be careful you know with your positioning and everything and we're going to look at some diagrams which will show you how the model is positioned front to back with respect to the um, to this octabank this is using a medium Ellen chrome octabank on a boom arm and we'll dig in and I'll take a look at all the gear uh, that was used for each of the setups that we're going to look at. Okay, so we've got obviously black seamless and then a white sun bounce reflector here, which is just going to kick back a little bit of light and help illuminate all of that because oftentimes what you find is people use one light and then everything on the figure kind of goes dark and falls into shadow and, and that's unfortunate, especially when you're talking about fashion. Um, you know, you, the garments are important, the details are important, and I think also with uh, with portrait work, I mean, you don't want everything falling, you know, into blackness. So this definitely helps and allows you still to create a really compelling look just with one light, okay? So that is top light, uh, and again, I think it's a really fantastic look, uh, not something that you s see talked about a lot, but something that I love to use. All right, so let's take a look at the lighting diagrams that were used uh, for this particular setup. Okay, so we're going to look at a couple of the shots. I think we have three shots to look at, all using the same setup and the same diagram. But what I wanted to show you here was uh, that we are feathering the light. Okay, so here you see from the top down, a uh, bird's eye view, you see the octabank here and the back edge of it, and you can see where the model is positioned. Okay, Kino is positioned just almost behind that light, and that is called feathering the light. And we've talked about this before, and for those of you guys that follow these tutorials and my articles, uh, you'll be familiar with feathering, but that's exactly what we're doing here. When you're feathering the light, you are working with the part of the light 
at the edge of the softbox, and that is arguably the softest part of the light. Because here in the center where you have the flash head, you have a very bright light and uh, it creates a hot spot and it is, um, in my opinion, not the most attractive light. So if you want a softer looking, more subtle kind of effect, uh, I definitely recommend that you uh, look at feathering light. It really it works like a charm. And whether you're doing that from the side or whether you're doing it, you can do that with, you know, with your light positioned anywhere that you want uh, as long as you're working with the back edge of the softbox. All right, so that's that. Um, and now let's take a look at the gear that was used before we look at a couple more of the looks that we uh, that we created with this uh, top light situation. Um, so I know everybody wants to dig in on the gear, so we're going to do that here. Um, so I slot for the grip. I'm using a uh, Manfrotto boom arm on a wind up stand. This is a super boom on a, a Manfrotto wind up stand, and um, this is you know this gear uh, pays dividends. It's not inexpensive, but man, I'll tell you, it pays dividends every time. Uh, I don't know. It makes my life super easy. So if you can get one of these, or you know if you are renting one of the studio, it's definitely worth your time to. Uh, to do it because they're just they, they make your life way easier um, for my key light I'm using a pro photo 7b 1200 watt second battery operated pack we are in the studio but that's the nice thing about this pack you can use it in the studio as well I'm using an extension cord here so that I can get up nice and high uh, a pocket wizard to trigger uh, the pro photo head right here medium uh, octabank medium Ellen chrome octabank I believe I called out the model number in the article the California Sunbounce Pro, this is a 4x6 reflector uh, to fill in the shadows. I'm using a Sekonic L758 DR meter in order to trigger this. The DR stands for radio, so that's going to, when I take a meter reading, that is going to trigger the light via the pocket wizard. Okay, And then to support the background, I'm just using two Kupo 40-inch uh, C-stands uh, with 20-inch uh, grip arms, which are these. So it's kind of a makeshift uh, backdrop, backdrop stand. Um, and then a roll of black Savage Seamless. There you go. So pretty simple stuff. All right. So it doesn't take a whole lot of gear. Uh, and then here are a couple more of the shots with that same setup. And you can see with the lighting diagram is exactly the same. So that's shot number two from our finals and shot number three from our finals. So you see it creates a really great look, um, whether you are doing full figure or portrait work, very versatile. Uh, and it kind of mimics what you get from overhead sun, but we obviously, you know, if you were to scrim it, so it's nice and soft. And you can see here what I was talking about before with the catch lights, you know, I'm, again, he's looking up, slightly tilted up toward that key light, and the key light is pitched slightly back toward the backdrop so that I'm sure that I get those catch lights because I really want those when at all possible. It's not a deal breaker. You don't always have to have them, but I think it adds a nice little pop to the eyes. All right. That takes care of look number one. All right, look number two. Now we've changed our light source to a constant light, a daylight balanced Fresnel. And that is made by a company called Lupolux. There are all sorts of daylight balanced Fresnels. A Fresnel allows you to focus the light. It has a lens in the front of it. And you can see here that there are knobs here and there's power is along the side. This knob will allow you to dial in either spot or um, flood the light. Uh, I'm also using what's called a gobo, or that is short for go-between, and that is basically any kind of pattern that you're going to put between your light and your subject, or in some cases uh, a, a wall. A lot of times uh, when you'll see interviews done in um, uh, either the news or TV magazine programs, you'll see a pattern thrown on the wall behind the subject that is being interviewed. It's kind of a dappled light pattern, and that is created by doing this, by projecting light through some sort of a cutout uh, pattern shape. And in this case, we're using a set of louvered blinds. Um, you can do this with, uh, you know, a fake uh, plant like leaves. Um, the British, I, I call it a dingle. Um, anything works really. And in this case, I just kind of wanted to create this dramatic noir look. Um, so the blinds kind of help do that. And we've got a, a silver reflector in the, here because we're dealing with a, a, a light source that has a lot less power. So I wanted more efficiency, more output from my reflective surface just to help kind of open up all this, right? 
Um, and you can see here, and I did of course have to open up my f-stop considerably. I think I went to uh, 2.8 or 4 or something like that, much more open than before when I was using the strobe. I was shooting at um, f-16. Uh, and I had to boost my ISO considerably, so that you'll you want to take that into consideration. Um, so strobe gives you one kind of look, and and it's a very predictable look. And constant light, especially a Fresnel, is going to give you a very different kind of light. So that's where the choices come in. And when you're when you're making those choices, when you're you know kind of uh, brainstorming the looks that you want to create, that helps you dictate what tools you choose in order to do them. And that's that's really the the magic, and that that's where the the secret sauce is. Okay, so light gets projected through this. Uh, gobo, uh, louvered blinds, and then we get this really cool pattern happening on our model. A very dramatic and very different look, but also, again, a one light look. You're, you can do a lot with one light, and that's really what I wanted to show you guys. All right, so let's take a look at the gear that we used for that. Again, we had our same setup here, the two C-stands and the uh, roll of seamless. Um, we have a uh, the Lupo Lux Daylight LED Fresnel, and you can see the lens here that I was telling you about, and here's where you control the power. Uh, I was using, I think, 75% power. This is a 1,000 watt um, rated unit. Uh, another C-stand to support the light, and a C-stand, a Kupo C-stand, uh, with a 40-inch grip arm, in this case, to support our louvered blinds, okay? I just put a, I created a, I bolted the blinds to a two by four and I put some little eye loops uh, up on the top from the hardware store uh, so that I could just slide it onto that grip arm, right? Um, and here's our reflector, silver reflector. So the uh, model is here, right? And light blasts through here, pattern falls here, and this is our fill helping to just open up the shadowed side. And again, I metered that with the Sekonic L750 ADR uh, using continuous light mode, not strobe mode, obviously. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple of the different looks in our lighting diagram, just so you can see uh, bird's eye view. Here you can see our LED, our Fresnel, and that's our Gobo, and the model, and our fill reflector, bringing light back in. To the shadowed side over here, All right? And you can see here we've got a nice light in the eyes. We've got that dramatic look. Uh, I like it. Okay, um, and again, one light. Love using one light. There's just a ton you can do. You don't have to have a ton of lights to create really cool looking images. Here's our next final. And lastly, our third final. There you go. We had a lot more, but I'm just including these just so you guys get a uh, feel for what's possible. And let's take a look at everything all together. So there we've got our three finals from our overhead light strobe look and our three finals from our constant light daylight balanced Lupa Lux Fresnel through a gobo creating that nice pattern. We've got our fill reflector on the left and that's it. That completes our second look. All right, guys, well, that's going to wrap it up for this month. I hope you guys have enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed creating it. Get out there and try your hand at some one light looks. And until next time, this has been Michael Corsentino. I'll see you next month.